I'm Neil Feldman, and my official title is Director of New Products at Solid State Logic. I'm going to talk to you a little bit this afternoon about a new product that we're launching called Big Six, and I'll talk a little bit about Big Six and its relationship to its earlier sister, Six. So in, in thinking about the evolution of Big Six, um, we were greatly informed by Six and the reaction to Six. And so we wanted to make Big Six sort of larger in, in every direction. So physically it would be larger, it would have more capacity, and we'd increase some of the capabilities of Big Six as well. When we were starting to think about what we would call such a larger thing, because Six had become quite a sort of iconic piece of technology, we thought actually the obvious name for something larger is going to be Big Six, um, and that's how the Big Six name it was. It was kind of one of those does what it says on the tin type approaches, where effectively it's very closely related to Six. It is bigger, and it's bigger in pretty much every direction. SSL's super analog technology is at the heart of Six and Big Six in their designs, and it's fundamental to the difference between a simple low-cost desktop type mixing console and the level of technology that lives within six and within big six with the design of the 9000 console in the 1990s we really wanted to introduce another level of performance to analog mixing consoles and super analog performance and super analog design is a thread that runs through all modern SSL analog circuit designs, unless we specifically choose to refer to something from a, an older console design. The benefits of super analog um, are that it delivers fantastic distortion performance, it delivers really low noise floors, and it gives fantastic dynamic range. So all that said, um, let me talk to you a little bit about some of the additional functionality for Big Six. Basically double each of the channel features that we had in Six. So we went from two super analog channels with EQ and compression to four super analog channels with EQ and compression. We went from two stereo channels to four stereo channels. And we also increased some of the capabilities in some of the other sort of areas of the console just to make it more useful for larger projects and, and larger sessions. I'll talk a little bit about some of the channel changes, some of the channel benefits that we have in, in Big Six. So the, the MyCamp design is pretty much, well, it's exactly the same design as we have in Six. That's proved to be really useful. People really like it. It is an incredibly high quality mic pre in terms of its noise floor and its dynamic range. And it's a very clean mic pre as well. The layout, this, again, for Big Six, it has two stereo Q buses. The thing that we've been able to do with a slightly larger footprint is lay that out a little bit more ergonomically, for want of a better word. Another feature that we've added to Big Six is the provision of a polarity switch in each one of the mono channels. Um, this was something that was uh, not part of the Six design, partly because of space. It's a useful feature where you've got um, more microphones on a single source where changing the polarity of them can help deal with some of the phase challenges that you might have with multi-mic configurations that are acting on a single source. The EQ section, well, we've retained exactly the same high and low frequency equalize, uh, equalizer sections that we had in six, um, but we've actually added an additional mid-band. And the mid-band design is, has a similar ethos to the high and low frequency designs in that it's a broad Q, a broad brush um, mid-band equalizer that allows you very quickly to change the, the mid characteristics of the signal that's traveling through the channel strip. The channel compressor is the same channel compressor that we have in six. An interesting facet of that channel compressor is that it's fixed attack and fixed release times. They're chosen with a gentle ratio 
um, such that they they work effectively. It has automatic makeup gain so that when you switch it in, you don't lose signal level through the channel path. And it also adds a little bit of character because of the attack and release time constants that we've chosen. It kind of balances a little bit adding color and character to the signal um, versus having a very clean mic pre as at the at the head of the channel strip. So it gives the console a little character and gives the summing through the console some character as well. We have the same 100 millimeter fader. Um, we have the same sort of panning and bus routing capabilities. So the, the channel strip, um, apart from the addition of the EQ and some layout changes, is largely the same as you'd find in six. And the stereo channels, we thought, well, it'd be quite handy to have some equalization in those channels. A stereo equalizer is a more complex animal than a mono equalizer. But we we thought, OK, well, let's see if we can put the three band shelving and mid band equalizer from the mono channel into the stereo channel. So working on left and right paths equally. The slight difference between the mono channel equalizer and the stereo channel equalizer is that the stereo channel equalizer doesn't have the bell switching of the high and low frequency sections. Um, and that's just simply because of space and component count. Another useful feature that we've added to the way that the stereo channels work is that we've actually put uh, a mono from left and right switch at the top of the channel strip. So if you're working with mono sources, this just makes the use of the channel strip a little easier to, to use because there's a switch at the top of the channel strip that allows you to mono signals coming in. Um, the console also retains a, a little feature of six, which was that if you only insert signal into the left side, it automatically monos between left and right sides. Given that a lot of the connectivity of big six is now at the rear of the console, we thought actually if we added a, a switch and a function on the front panel to do that, it would make people's lives a little bit easier. Six was designed as a compact, fit in a hold all product. Um, that meant that for some of the connectivity, we had to make some compromises. Um, and those compromises were basically using sub D connectors for some of the connections on the rear of the console. Um, that allowed us to put the number of inputs and outputs that we could into a, a very compact frame. With Big Six, we have something that's physically larger and to make installation and use a little easier, we've now implemented all of the connectivity through either XLR connectors or tip ring sleeve jack connectors. Um, so the rear of Big Six is entirely covered with jack connectors for all of the connections that um, the console needs if they're not on the front panel. A question that we quite often get asked is about the heritage of the equalizer circuits that are in six and big six. And essentially they're very similar to the high and low shelf electronics that you'll find in uh, an SSL E-series equalizer set pretty much on its broadest um, Q settings. Um, so there is definitely a, an SSL heritage to those equalizers. Big six, aside from all of the analog signal processing, big six also contains 16 high quality A to D and D to A converters um, that connect via a USB-C connector to a workstation. Um, and there are Windows drivers for that USB connection and they are core audio compliant. So you can just plug it into a Mac and it will just appear and, and work straight away. So then we have 16 converters and the decision is where do we put these and how do we sort of connect these up within big six to be useful and we made some fairly straightforward decisions um, so the first 12 converters connect to the first four uh, super analog channels and then the other the remaining four stereo uh, channels and so that takes up 12 of those D to A converters. We also connected the remaining four D to A converters to the external inputs um, so that there was an easy way to bring signals into the console from the workstation to feed into the external monitor selection uh, selectors if you wanted to be able to configure the system to do that. For the outputs, so for the A to D converters, we assigned those to each one of the channel outputs. So each of the mono channel outputs has got a direct connection to a A to D converter. Each of the stereo channels has got a connection to the A to D converter. And we've put provision in the switching of the source of those A to D 
converters such that it can be fed pre-fader or post-fader. We also thought mm, it might be quite useful if we were able to use the QSENs to be able to feed directly to the A to D converters so that if, for example, you were using the workstation and the channels in the workstation to create um, if external effects, for example, so reverb effects, you had a way to feed those reverb or echo effects directly off the QSEND pots in the channel strip. So in the master sections for QSENDs 1 and QSEND 2, there is switching that allows you to remove the A to D connections from channels 9, 10, 11 and 12 and feed those to be sourced from QSENDs one left and right and two left and right. Uh, and this basically allows you to incorporate your workstation's effects processing into the mixing that you're doing with Big Six. Just talking a little bit about another really well-received feature of Six, which was the idea to add a an SSL bus compressor into this really small footprint console. That was a challenge from a design perspective and largely the challenge was well, partly about fitting the circuitry into such a small space but also how do you reduce the number of switches and buttons that you need that you would find on a typical SSL G series bus compressor or SSL stereo bus compressor. Ultimately when we were talking to people about how they use the bus compressor and what um, parameters they would typically adjust we quite quickly got to a point where we realized that for many users, they it was a kind of uh, a fix and forget set of settings that they would use for their bus compressors. So that kind of made our design choices somewhat easier for six in that basically we chose the fastest attack and the fastest release time and we chose a compression ratio of four to one as the kind of typical go-to settings for many engineers. In big six, we have a little more space um, and so we've actually put in the auto release function so we, you have a, a choice of release characteristics in big six the standard 100 millisecond fast release time or the auto release setting from the bus compressor which is a basically is a combination of a long release and a short release and it depends a bit on signal content as to how that reacts a little bit more additional flexibility in the in the bus compressor that that we have in big six I'll talk a little bit more about the monitoring additions that we've put in Big Six because we've added to the flexibility over and above the abilities of Six in, in there too. So Six has a single headphone output. In Big Six, we've given it two headphone outputs. And rather than just parallel those headphone outputs, we've actually given each one of those headphone outputs its own sort of source matrix, basically. So you can choose to have those headphone outputs be following the monitoring as they typically do, or be sourced from the two stereo buses, uh, Qbus 1 and Qbus 2 from the, from the console. The mix bus has an inject, a balanced inject, that allows you to bring the main outputs, for example, from a six console and inject them into the main mix bus of a big six, thus basically sort of cascading the two consoles to give extra facilities and extra summing capability and extra uh, usefulness to the combination of those two, those two mixing consoles. In addition to the channel compression, um, the Six and Big Six have a bus compressor, and there is also a third compressor that's um, available in the console, um, and that is the Listen Mic compressor, which is the sort of classic compressor that's used um, for squashing, aggressively squashing drums, um, and its heritage is in the its use as a studio return talkback compressor. So that gives us kind of three quite distinct compression flavors within both six and big six, um, which is a lot of compression characteristics in uh, a small a small box. Another nice feature that we added was the provision of a truly high impedance um, input. So um, the, the high Z input um, switch switches the input impedance um, to roughly one mega ohms, which is fantastic for older um, equipment and also things like guitars that have got a natural sort of very high input impedance. We were really encouraged when we started to get feedback from users of six with guitar type sources and bass, bass guitars that they really appreciated the punch 
and the depth that they had from an impedance matched connection to to the input of the console. One of the driving concepts that we had when we were designing six was we wanted a small footprint product that had a full length a full travel fader um, and part of the reason for wanting that is that um, it gives you a lot more fine control over the gain that you're you're adjusting in and to rebalance a mix or to control the gain of a source um, and the, the fader law um, is also designed around that concept so if you look at big six you'll see that the 0 dB position to the minus 10 and plus 10 position has got quite a lot of travel. It's probably about 50% of the travel is around that um, gain range. Um, and that really means that you can make small, subtle adjustments on to the mixes and to the levels that are going through the console. One of the things that people quite often comment about six, and I'm sure they're going to comment about big six as well, is the number of meters that there are. And the design of those meters was something that was quite important to what we felt the console needed to represent. So you may, if you look at a six or a big six bar graph meter, you'll see that it has um, LED points at plus 24 and plus 18. And those points were chosen because they represent the SIMT and the EBU zero dBFS standards. So they are kind of recognized um, professional standards. Um, the other thing was the sort of response of the meters. So a, a challenge with any meter is designing what its meter response is. And typically for meters that are going to be used with digital equipment, you want some Something with a pretty fast response because if it's not fast you won't see where the meter is clipping um, and the clipping impact that that might have on a on a converter and converters don't clip gracefully they tend to clip fairly aggressively so you ideally need to know where that clipping point is going to be um, and so hence we chose a fast ballistic the challenge with choosing um, a fast attack and release ballistic is that basically it makes the meters really difficult to look at because if the release ballistic is fast, they disappear very quickly. So they they look like flashing lights, essentially. So the meter release ballistic, we've slowed down a bit so that basically you can see what the meter level was rather than just being a blinking, a blinking light. Um, and so the combination of sort of multiple point bar graph meters, um, so in the in the main meters, we've got a longer bar graph than we have in the channel meters, but the channel meter does have uh, an eight segment bar graph meter. And those bar graph light up points are real light up points in dB. Um, so they represent um, accurate analog signal levels. And all of this again is the sort of part of what we feel is the sort of next level professional design of six and big six over um, less expensive um, but similar looking products. So I hope you've enjoyed this little background into the evolution of six and the further evolution of six into big six. Um, we've been amazed and excited by the number of different applications people have put six to. We hope we've taken some of that feedback and built in the tools for six, big six to take that even further. And we're really looking forward to see how people use big six in their studios in the future. So I'd just like to say thanks very much and I hope you've enjoyed this and thanks for watching. Cheers.